There was nothing else at all in the whole world but football. Hey guys, Simon here from the Triple F. Hope you're all well. Welcome to the Triple F show. This was the managerial mayhem discussion that Oliver and I had this Tuesday, uh, which was just a very eventful, crazy last few days, really, where the likes of Daniel Farker, Dean Smith losing their jobs, uh, Eddie Howe eventually being appointed Newcastle boss, Conte becoming the new Spurs boss, and then Ole seemingly surviving the nuclear apocalypse. Uh, and then obviously um, overseas, Xavi has just become the new Barcelona manager. So there's there's a hell of a lot for, for Oliver and I to get our teeth sunk into. But we, we did do and uh, we enjoyed every little bit of it. We had a really good chat. Um, however, I just want to quickly warn you the ending of the episode, um, the, the conversation that Ollie and I have ends extremely abruptly just because the, the technical issues at the end um, just meant that it had to end like the click of a finger. So apologies for that. But um, I hope you guys enjoy anyway and take care. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye now. Yeah, it's funny, man, because I think like when I booked you in for this on um, on WhatsApp, uh, it was about two, three weeks ago, but there wasn't really a lot going on in the footballing world. Um, and I actually just had a look ahead on the Leeds fixtures just to see what was going to be occurring at the time of the interview. Um and yeah, there wasn't a lot. I think yeah, I'd noticed that you you were just about to to play Leicester like you had, and I thought we were just going to talk about Leeds, and that that was pretty much it. But my God, in the last few days, it's been absolute managerial meltdown. It's uh, it's crazy. It has, gone pretty, it has gone pretty mad. Everyone's sort of bit in the bullet at the same at the same time, getting a bit nervous before Christmas and thinking it's now or never, right? It's... Yeah, but it's a, it's what is it? Eleven games in, and we've seen. Five managers get sacked already. Yeah. It's, it's nuts. Yeah. I mean, Norwich surprises me a bit because mm. there is no way anything other than what's happened is, is what was going to happen. Mm. Like you could, you could see, you could see them getting to the point they're at now with a maximum of one win. Mm. So it's it's strange that they left it this long if they were thinking they might make a change at all, unless something else has happened. Yeah. Was it bad PR for you? I mean, for me, it was a little bit just to do it after they'd won their first well, apparently, game. I mean, apparently they made the decision in the morning. They made the decision before mm, the game. But why? So is it like a favour for Parker to let him play know. his last game? Like, I, what I the think, hell? It, I think Gary Lineker said on Match of the Day, is this, is it better or worse that they sacked him after he won? Like, is that, does that make the situation worse or better? But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was a weird one. I think it, would, it made me feel worse, I think. Yeah. Could, yeah, knowing you're going to get the chop, but you, yeah, you've still got to go out and manage No, them. no, I, yeah. I don't know if he knew. I'm un, I, I don't oh, know right. if he knew before the game, but they had made apparently the board had made the decision before. I just mean mm. sacking him, essentially sacking him after he's won. Like, if I was here, yeah. I, would, I would have been like, Sack, you should have sacked me before. Like, why, why have I done mm. you this favour of getting you three points? Yeah, exactly. He, he would be on a high. He's probably looking at it thinking, right, this is the momentum that I yeah. needed. Now we can like move forward and, and go, on, go on. on. But yeah, and beat and run away. see you later, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's no, going. But yeah, I, personally, I yeah, I think it's a bit harsh. Um, the guy's done incredibly well for, for Norwich. Um, obviously, he, he can't cut it at the championship and then maybe, uh, so he can't cut it outside of the championship and maybe... He possibly just needed someone in his backroom staff with a bit more experience, with a bit more of a, a new to just just kind of grind out wins. Because it was against Arsenal, I think, where they actually did take a bit of a different approach. And that's why I think it was only a 1-0 win that we managed. Because they, they were actually trying to, to close us out a little bit and it was a bit of a tighter match. And I thought, are they, is this now going to be like a new approach for them? And it, and unfortunately, they just went back to to plan A, um, which just isn't working for them. I think they just need perhaps somebody with a bit more um, of a, a wiser head 
on shoulders to to sort of help guide them through the Premier League a bit more because it, it's clearly not worked for I'm, them. I'm not disagreeing with you, but I think they I think I think they need better players. Like they sold they mm. sold arguably their best player of the last three years or so with Bundia going to Villa. Yeah, but the first time they had Bundy, I mean, it didn't really work either. So I don't know if it's just well, he, that. I think there's... he was he was one of the highest cr- chance creators in the league that year, even though they went down, mm. and even though they didn't yeah. score that many goals, he was there creating all the chances. They just weren't putting them away, which, if anything, mm. tells you they need a striker alongside him. But they didn't yeah. replace him. That you can't replace a player that you sell for thirty-five million unless you pot buy someone for thirty-five million. So I think they mm. were they were hamstrung. He was hamstrung, hamstrung. I'm not sure. Hamstrung, hamstrung. I think. Yeah, hamstrung. Yeah. Uh, before the season even started, <laughs> like best player going, and then they brought in. They spent. They actually spent quite a bit of million, uh, quite a bit of money, quite a bit of millions, quite a bit of money. Um, <laughs> but I couldn't tell you a single one of the players. They bought Sergeant, didn't they? Striker, but mm. he scored a goal. Yeah, he scored one goal, I think. And that Norman guy, Norwegian player, the I've got to say, he, I th- actually think he's looked quite good. I think Norman's looked mm. quite good. Yeah, he was good. He was he was yeah. their best player against Leeds a couple of couple of weeks ago. Mm. I mean, he scored against Brentford yeah, as yeah. well. So I think he's he's starting to impose himself. I agree with you. They definitely don't have the players, and I don't think they're recruited well enough for the Premier League. Um, they probably just needed a bit of steel brought in as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's a weird one how managers and, and players, but especially obviously as we're just mostly talking about managers, how there are managers that can really only sort of cut it at the championship. And then somehow when they come to the Premier League, it's like a fish out of water. They're so... We, 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 I mean, we talked... just can't do it. Everyone's talked a million times about players that are that the players that are too good for the championship but can't make it in the Premier League, like David Nugent is one name that has come mm. up over the years. and Adil Tarab. Yeah, yeah. And Billy Sharp, I suppose. And, you know, there's lots of... Like, mm. They tend to be goal scorers mainly, don't they? They're, they'll bang in 30-plus yeah. goals with ease in the championship, go up to the Premier League and, and get yeah. only like five. Cameron Cameron Jerome, I think, is kind of a, <laughs> oh, yeah. another one as well. Birmingham, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and Stoke as well. But yeah, yeah, there's loads of them. There's loads of players, but there's there's also managers as well that just Neil can't Mark for is, some reason. Like, is another one you yeah. have to mention, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, he's also a manager that got recently sacked. Yeah, as well, he's got left, left middle for isn't he? Or they kicked him out, whichever. We might as well get into it now. But I mean, I was going to ask you this question: Do you think um, Norwich or Villa kind of missed a trick in in not bringing in Chris Wilder? Because I, I personally think. If you look at Norwich's situation, I mean, they've still got a chance, I think they, haven't they? Oh no, is, is he going? I know he's, he's at Middlesbrough. To, that's oh, what. That's sorry. why I was. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's now the new Middlesbrough boss. That. So that's why. Yeah, that's that's why I was going to ask: Have they missed a trick? Because now he's been appointed Middlesbrough boss. Um, but I, I think he would have been a great fit for for either Villa or um, Norwich. But um, I think Villa can possibly do a bit I more think, given their resources. I think Villa will be more ambitious. I mean, looking, mm. I've got but I've... a couple of the names written down, and not well, the, the three names under Norwich does not fill me with hope for them. It's Lampard, Dean oh. Smith, and that for some reason yeah. Ralph Hasnutl Hus- is being linked. I'm like, surely that's but for Norwich, yeah, like, surely that's never going to happen. Why would why would that yeah. happen? I think Hasnutl would be a better fit for Aston Villa, but then again, like, why? I mean, I don't. I mean, is that even much of a step forward for him if he was to do that? I think Villa and Southampton are more or less on the same, and Norwich would just be an absolute well, step down. I think not, Aston, Aston Villa's owners have a lot of money. That could mm. be something that might sway some. I mean, the the Villa names I've got here: are Roberto Martinez, Steven Gerrard, yeah. Ralph Hasen, uh Graham Potter. Apparently, allegedly, he grew up as a Villa fan. Never know. Oh, right. Yeah, he's a Birmingham lad, isn't he? And it? and the name that the name of the person with the busiest agent of the last couple of months, Paulo Fonseca, because he has literally been linked to yeah. every managerial job in the whole of the UK. Did he turn Spurs down, or was it like the other way around? Who knows what it was? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it was a farce from Spurs' point of view. Well, but, I mean, it makes 
I don't want to push on too quickly away from Villa and Norwich, but it makes it even stranger that they managed to get Conte now because mm. why did that not happen in the summer? Why not? What's the what's the reason? Yeah, well, I think Daniel Levy just trying to push too much of a hard I can believe that. It's possibly, yeah. I, and yeah. lot of Spurs fans do not like him. And Conte's quite stubborn as well, so I think those two just, like, their heads clashed massively. Um, but, yeah. But, you know, I'll just go back to, to Villa and Spurs. I mean, who do you think would your sort of choice be for, for a good fit for either team? Okay. Well, I, Villa and Norwich. Yeah. Well, I mean, of that, the, sh- the, the shortlists, if they are the real shortlists, I'd have to say that Norwich, I can't see him getting Hassan Hootl. I really don't think they should go for Lampard. So it'd be Dean Smith. And actually, it's not a bad shout. I don't think it'd be a bad fit. Mm. Whether he keeps them up, probably not. But who does? Who is actually mm. going to keep them up? Villa's a lot more interesting. You know, Roberto Martinez has been linked to a few Premier League jobs over the last couple of years. He's got quite a good gig going at, in, at Belgium, you know. They've, they're obviously mm. happy with what he's doing, even though they're essentially seen as a you know, not quite fulfilling their potential with their golden generation. You wonder how many more years they've got with those players. And Steven Gerrard has had a couple of years at Rangers, done quite well. Yeah, is it time for does him he, to, to does he, make that inevitable move to yeah, the Premier Yeah, I mean, League? we all know it's going to happen one day. The stepping stone to Liverpool. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's in a way, it seems like a good fit. But then again, if he goes in there and doesn't do very well... Is that it? Is, mm-hmm. is he is he never going to get the Liverpool? Game? Yeah, but he's gonna he's gonna have to make that that stepping stone, like I said, because you know I don't think he's gonna. I think he does have one kind of eye on the Liverpool job eventually. I mean, Jurgen Klopp's not going to be there forever, um, but he's, it's not going to happen from Rangers to Liverpool. He's going to have to to you know yeah. um, cut his cloth in the uh, in the Premier League at some point. He's only got a couple of years mm-hmm. under his belt, Rangers. Does he need? He needs a bit more adversity, perhaps. You know, if he yeah. was to jump over, just yeah. to make sure that he feels ready. And I don't know, maybe he does feel ready. Yeah. Where are Aston Villa in the league? Actually, they're not doing very uh, well. No, I mean it's five. It's five. Is it five in a row that he lost? Yeah, so it's, that, it's that twenty gone, something so. this calendar year as well. Twenty mm. over twenty games lost this calendar year, which is not good in anyone's book, is yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you put it like that, because. In you know, in my opinion, I did think it was a little bit harsh for for Smith to to get the sack, considering I mean he joined Aston Villa when they were fourteenth in the Championship and got them up the following year. I mean he's, he's worked wonders there; like he's done a, a fantastic job. I think maybe he he deserved a little bit more time, but at the same time, when you put it like that, five in a row and and the thing about the calendar year, it's just yeah, maybe the board didn't really have any I mean, other choice. In a way, you could think that. Actually, the first half of last season, they were they were on fire. Yeah, yeah, they were pretty much doing what like West Ham are doing now. Leeds did hammer them three nil, but that's not that doesn't matter. <laughs> they were doing really well, and they could they could afford yeah. to have that terrible second half of the season and still finish sort of lower. I can't remember quite where they finished now. Mid table though, somewhere. Yeah, I I have little sympathy for Villa just because of the way Emmy Martinez has kind of been like giving it all the beans about going there and going to a bigger club so it's like yeah watch your mouth Emmy oh he loves doing <laughs> it doesn't he he, he yeah, is yeah. a shit house. <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely but well, I'm just glad we've got a fantastic keeper in Ramsdale so I don't I don't miss Emmy at all yeah, but it's it's nice to see Ramsdale in the team where he's a bit busy but not conceding lots of goals. Yeah, I think I think you know with Ramsdale there was this obviously statistic coming out before we signed him, and you know it, that was connected to the fact that we spent twenty five million on a second choice keeper that always gets relegated because I think every club well, just been, honest, they've ended up getting relegated. They were facts. But, but that's because they were facts. He was coming in a second choice and he's been relegated two years in a row. Yeah, but at the same time, they were shit teams, so that's <laughs> kind of why he got relegated. It's not his fault that, you know, he had a leaky defence in front of him every time. If you like football films, then come check out the Triple F Cinema, where I'm joined by guests, sometimes football fans, sometimes not, to review a specific football film. Give me 
two tickets to that football film right now. I just thought for me, Chris Wilder would have been great for, for Norwich because um, I think, like as I mentioned before, I think Villa possibly are a bit too sort of above his level, but Norwich would have just been a great fit. And I think that's what they need. They need, and Dean Smith, like you mentioned as well, might be a good fit because they just need something else. They need a different approach, the whole kind of and solidity. beautiful football yeah, that beautiful football approach that they had under Farker, it's, um, it's not working. They get, they need to, need to shape up a bit more. Yeah, I mean, I could see if Dean Smith, I've not seen any comments attributed to him since since Villa sacked him, so who knows whether he feels like he needs a bit of time off or something. I would. Ex- it would be hilarious if Dean Smith ends up at Norwich and Daniel Farker ends up at Villa. I, yeah. <laughs> Which yeah, is not going to happen. Both going to happen. I just want Farker to remain in the Premier League because he's just a wonderful character and he's got such a great I voice. I mean, he's been... He's looked a bit <laughs> sad this year, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he's not a typical... That's what I like about him. He's not a typical looking... He hasn't got that typical manager look. He, no, looks, he looks like, like he's in a... From Game of Thrones. Yeah, or like he looks like he should be in Kings of Leon or yeah. something like that. Like some sort of trendy band. Are you trendy still? Uh, yeah, that's that's just me being an old dad, mate. <laughs> I'm going to be one of those awkward dads that brings up Kings of Leon references and when my kid's 10 or something. Oh, you, know, you still listen to that cool Kings of Leon band, huh? <laughs> they won't be together in 10 years, surely. No, no. But you never know. Coldplay are still going. I can't believe that. And they're still... And they're hip. I'm... Mean, Coldplay. Sorry, they're what? Yeah, what, what, what word is that you just used? That? They're hip, Oliver. It's still a... <laughs> hey, what is the, what's the right word? They're peng? I don't know. That's the I don't know the word. word. I just know that that's the word <laughs> that even I wouldn't use. <laughs> trendy. They're trendy. I mean, I thought you were going to roll out fab next as well. Like, I was, I didn't know quite where you were <laughs> They're <going>. groovy. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I'm just yeah, I mean, embarrassing we, myself. We talk about Dean um, Smith and Norwich, and then Villa is Villa's a bit more difficult. The, the short list is longer, and there's a lot more variables, and we know they've got more ambition and they have more money, mm. and they spent a lot of money as well. So, they've, and we know they have some good players. It's looking at the, the list; it's all down. If I think if Roberto Martinez fancied coming to the Premier League, I think that would be a good fit. Yeah, somebody mentioned a decent name to me um, yesterday, I think it was, uh, and that's uh, Kasper Hjulmand, the um, Denmark manager, um, who obviously did fantastically well in the Euros. Um, I don't know who he's managed in terms of teams, but apparently he's a really good manager. I mean, that's more or less what got him the Denmark job. Um, and, you know, judging by how well he dealt with that whole situation, yeah. I mean, he had... As you know, as you're aware, that it was a, an awful thing to deal with. But they managed. I mean, got them to the semis, considering what happened to Eriksen. Yeah, look, getting the, the Denmark Danish team to the, the semis was absolutely in, in fantastic and amazing. Turning around um, that, from that horrible yeah. incident with Eriksen to to achieve that is is quite impressive. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I mean, that would be quite a good shout. But yeah, I think in terms of a proven, tested pair of hands and, and, and a reliable pair of hands. I think Martin is definitely would probably be the right fit for Villa. Yeah. I, and I, I think he's got a bit of a point to prove as well, like coming back to, I agree. to the Premier League and proving Everton what they <laughs> what mistake they made by getting rid yeah, of him. Yeah, I agree. I think it would on mm-hmm. on the list it would he would make the most sense to me. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd be surprised if. Brighton seem to be quite good at saying no when people come for their players and things like that. So I'd imagine they'd be the same with Graham Potter. I'd be, mm. I, I, sus, I suspect the Hassan Hootel thing is maybe his agent trying to get him a new contract at Southampton, perhaps. 
Yeah. But why on earth Possibly. would he be linked to the Norwich job? That just sounds. I mm. could not. I just couldn't see that in a million years. And yeah. Gerard, you know, Gerard just feels like he's a natural link. I think he's probably going to get linked to every Premier League job for a half decent <laughs> team now until he mm. goes to one. I can see Gerard being a decent second choice. Um, I think you know if they do go for the likes of Martinez and then perhaps are unable to do that because it's it's it's, going to, it's not going to come cheap as well. Mm-hmm. They're going to have to pay a pretty penny to get him. But um, I think uh, if they were unable to do that, and I think Gerard would be a great a great option um, if they fail. Yeah, agree. But we'll Again, see. I agree with you. But uh, cool, man. The um, let's talk about. Conte, then, um, good appointment for you? Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I mentioned to you earlier that I don't know why this didn't happen in the summer, and I think you made a great point. It was probably Daniel Levy being Levy, to be perfectly honest, and that's completely believable. Mm. I think Conte is just the sort of manager they need. Look at how he managed to galvanise into Milan. I mean, he hasn't got a pre-season here. So maybe this year he just does what he can and then next year mm. pushes on a bit. I'm not saying they're going to win the title, but if if they're willing to invest, then I don't see mm. why they can't just be look, only be looking up, to be honest. Yeah. I think it's a really good appointment yeah. for them. I think any number of teams throughout the whole of Europe would have wanted him. Yeah, I know. It's a good point you bring up about um, how he kind of works well with teams that are, that are not expected to do that well and, and works with messes in, in, in a sense. Because he did that at Chelsea, didn't he? he picked yeah, no one the, expected the, him to win the, the league. Cool. No, that, I mean, that was straight after Mourinho as well, which it, the wheels completely did fell they, off. Um, did, they, did they win the FA Mourinho's Cup? Mourinho's second spell. Oh, no, they won the league. They won the league uh, in the FA Cup. It was his second year at Chelsea. Yeah. They got to the final of the FA Cup and the mighty Arsenal beat them 2-1. Never heard of them. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think I think yeah, he, he he's definitely able to to work wonders, and I think wonders is what they need at, at Spurs. Because um, I mean, do you think he's he's got the the right players there to to implement his style? Because he's going to at some point use the three five two, isn't he? I mean, and he relies on on wing backs to a sense. I know he's not. And he's definitely done it into and every other job. He has obviously played with a four at the back, but he does like a three-five-two. And I think he's gonna he's gonna need a lot of uh, width. The... And I, w- I wonder if Doherty or Rekion are going to be relied on massively. I'm just wondering on that left hand side. Is Rekion on the left back? Yeah, he's left. Yeah. Okay. I uh, thought right, so, yeah. he would have been more of a question mark because he's more of a fullback, isn't he, rather than a. Mm. Well, he played as a bit of a wing back for Wolves, didn't he? Because I, I think him as being more defensive. But... I don't know why. I don't know. Um, I think he's quite a t- no. Dias is really attacking. Like, if you think about like he played really well on the counter, I think. Um, and you think about Nuno, he always played with that sort of three-five-two with can we, the Wolves. Can we agree time. that? They need to replace Eric Dyer and his large, abnormally shaped head. <laughs> I don't know with Dyer what kind of player he's, he is. He's not a very good player. player. <laughs> no, like, is he a centre back? Is he a defensive mid? Like, what? What is he? Like, what is Eric Dyer? I, th- I think he's just sort of fleecing his way into a Premier League career. I don't know how the hell he's managed it, but you know. They need, it's, they yeah, need it, another central defender in there instead of him. Yeah. Because that um, uh, was the guy that they got from Atalanta. Um, he's he's not done very well, but Romero? he has got a pro- Yeah, Romero, Christian Romero. So he's quite a, a promising centre back. And I think, you know. But Davinson Sanchez as well, possibly is there's something there, there's something to work with. But yeah, I think Dyer just needs to to move on personally. I don't think he's I, mean, I don't like to cut pick on for players that, but for that level. I mean, <laughs> he's no, I don't I don't know. He's 
Yeah. He scored that yeah. penalty for England. Something you could never really forget because that was quite amazing. But yeah. he doesn't ever. He doesn't ever look secure at the back of at the back of Tom's defence, and he looks like yeah. he can make a mistake any game. And he's already made a few this season that have cost him mm. goals. But then again, like Conte works wonders. Um, he might be able to polish a turd, and so I can't believe he's scored him a turd. That's a bit hard. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah. Oh yeah. God, we're, I wasn't expecting us to go in so hard on Eric Dyer. I mean, it's natural with me being a, a, a gunner. But I'm yeah, just it's going um... out with you. That's what it is. <laughs> but yeah, I. Maybe, maybe um, Conte will be able to turn it around for him and, and make him a decent, decent player. Big, the, but the um, big player, really, that he has to turn around is Harry Kane. Yeah. But the way he did Lukaku, you know, and not obviously not the same mm. player, but a, a, a striker who looks a bit, a bit out of sorts, you know, a bit low on confidence yeah. and a bit lost. Yeah. I mean, there was a moment at the start of the season where it seemed like Nuno was getting Harry Kane on the on the same page, um, but then I just think with Nuno, Nuno was lost himself, and he just completely lost yeah. the whole dressing room gradually. <laughs> and then Harry Kane just doesn't maybe, seem interested at the time. Maybe all. Mourinho broke Kane, you know, by making <laughs> him that sort of free roaming second. Strike or whatever it was, yeah, striker, whatever that was. Yeah. I don't know what position it was, but he was getting loads of assists and still yeah. scoring goals. Yeah, yeah, weird. Well, Mourinho turned him into a, a great all-round player, but yeah, for some reason it just didn't work any in any other system. But um, I, I, as much as I hate to say it, I think Conte will will get a good team out of out of Tottenham. Um, but the weird thing for me is like how how long term is this going to be? Because Good Conte, question. yeah, Con, yeah, Conte is a, a short term manager, and Conte likes to have a lot of control in the projects that he works with. He's not going to get that with Levy, and he's not going to get much um, freedom in terms of recruitment either, because they've got Fabio Paratici there, and Daniel Levy has absolutely set his cards out in terms of putting Paratici at the top of the the pyramid because I, I remember seeing a, a statement at the start of the year how they were saying it was a, almost like a letter to the fans saying thanks to all of you fans and, and being behind us now let's get behind Fabio and Nuno it's like why would you put Fabio <laughs> first was... yeah it was really odd but yeah well, so that, that that kind of raises question marks the one me. one thing that you can see contrasting parallels, I think that's what they are, between him leaving Inter because they were selling all their best players and coming to Spurs where they didn't sell their best player for like, what was 150 million, 160 million last year. That in itself, you could see why that would be appealing to Conte. Mm. He's literally gone from a club where they've said, oh, we have to sell these good players, to a club where they're like, there's no way we're selling our best players. I mean, I know which one of those two I'd want to be manager of. And yeah. It, it, you know, it's... I'm, th there must have been... There must have been discussions about recruitment. Like, there's no way that, that he would just surely just agree to whatever they said. There must be a, there'd be a bit of give and take. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You'd, you'd hope so. It, it'll be but... interesting to see what they do Maybe it was just money. Maybe well, it's just a bit more. I mean, that comes comes with him being a reasonably short term manager. I mean, Juventus is the only team he's been in charge of for more than two seasons, and they only did three seasons mm. there. Mm. But if if they get through this next six seven weeks to January, and they're doing all right, and they and and they still bring someone in in January. You know, I think maybe he's. I think he's going to. If I was him, I'd be feeling quite happy about things. If they do terribly for six weeks and then don't sign anyone in January, then maybe he'll be off. <laughs> you know, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to yeah. watch. I think. Yeah, yeah, but I will see. I mean, things can change because Pep Guardiola was a manager that had kind of obviously after Barcelona 
I think he was only at Bayern Munich for about two seasons. So I just assumed that he was going to be like a, sh a short-term manager. So that was the one thing that gave me hope that we're not going to see a Man City domination because Pep's going to go at some point. But <laughs> having said that, he's now been there six seasons, I think. He's, yeah, he's one yes. of the... I think he's the third longest-serving uh, Premier League likes, manager. He likes it here, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, he does. He's mad for it, mate. But Best certain... league in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you're enjoying the Triple F show, then you might enjoy our other podcasts. The Magic Of is a show which profiles special clubs from all over the world to find out about their history, culture and fan base. Under the Floodlights invites fans to talk about their favourite players and managers. And the Triple F cinema is where guests and I review weird and wacky football films. Newcastle. I mean, it, it, it was a bit of a weird one because it seemed... Like the Newcastle were kind of taking their time to appoint a manager. And this is a, a weird one as well. I mean, I kind of, if I was in charge of a football team, that would be, that's such a horrible oh, yeah, idea. Oh, yeah, sick just um, hearing you say it. Um, <laughs> I am not supporting but, that team. <laughs> God help us all if that ever happened. But if... If I were to be, um, you know, making the decisions on, on who to appoint, I would, one of the things I would do is after I've sacked a manager, is just make it quick, make sure that I've got a manager in place to bring in as soon as possible. But, I mean, with all of these um, clubs that have just recently sacked their manager, it's, it's taken quite a long bit of time, I think, to, to eventually appoint a manager. Why would you not have that? And it's been that ready beforehand. It's been quite common in the past as well, where an owner has come in, and we've all known who the new manager is going to be before they take. If if they're going to complete the takeover, this person's going to be the manager, and we've all known it. Mm. Whereas this has been a bit. Oh, are they going to get rid of Steve Bruce? And then it was like, mm. when are they going to get rid of Steve Bruce? And then they got rid of mm. him. It was like, was that was that the plan? You were going to give it a couple of weeks and yeah. then not have anything yeah. else after that yeah it doesn't seem like a very sort of well-oiled um organization at the moment but yeah we'll see but i, I mean it looked as if unai emery was coming in at some point and i'm kind of glad for emery as well i mean things didn't go well at arsenal at all for him but um i i think he carried himself really well and i think he was a gentleman and i you know I, I kind of do have a lot of sympathy for him, but I'm just so glad that he didn't come back to England because I just don't think he's cut out for for English football. I think he's just, yeah, he's much more suited to continental shores, it shall we say. It feels like he's really found his place in uh, Villarreal as well because mm. they, I mean, uh, they've not done great in uh, La Liga, but in Europe they've been fantastic for him. And yeah. you know they've looked and they've looked really good as well. They're really solid. They've got a couple of goals in them. Um, as long as they don't get someone sent off, they seem they seem pretty good. And they seem quite a tight knit bunch of players. I think there are a couple of players just signed quite long contract extensions there as well. So it would have been mm. even more disappointing to see him leave after that happened as well. Because you would have, you would expect them to have factored him in the short term at the very least and by short term I don't mean two weeks <laughs> I'm thinking like at least this season you know? yeah yeah I think uh, yeah. I agree it would, have been, it would have been sad to see him but it would have been sad to see him leave Villarreal it would, mm. it'd be nice to see if he could do more with them than he's done you know winning the Euro Europa yeah. League let's see if he can do well in Europe and well in La Liga in the same season perhaps I, think, I just think he's got a good thing going at a Villarreal and he should and he obviously has made the choice to sort of stick there and, and see it out and I think you know he could be onto a good project there and I'm glad that he's um, decided to do that but yeah I mean with with Eddie Howe is he the right man to to get them out of this this relegation scrap because they are second from bottom and it's um, yeah it's not looking good at all no, they've not been good enough at top or at back have they um, no he's... It's a, it's a, it's an interesting one, and I feel like it's got so many questions that we're not gonna, we can't answer until mm. we actually see what he does with the team, because mm. it's hard to know how much potential is actually there with the Newcastle players because they're playing, they're playing reasonably stilted football, you know, quite regimented and strict in their, in their sort of fluidity around the pitch and their, in their formations mm. and things, 
with Steve Bruce in charge, it's like, is is Eddie Howe going to all of a sudden flick a switch and are going to be a bit more attacking or free flowing? I mean, I'm pretty sure that, however, I can't remember exactly what they were like, but however Bournemouth started when he first got them up, I'm pretty sure they weren't attack, 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 attack. Mm. There has to be some sort of conservatism in there, in there, some and have the do the does the Newcastle squad have that? I mean, it feels like it yeah. feels like they've got some good attacking presence. They've got mm. well, you've got Alan St. Max and, and Wilson, you know. Yeah, and they've got oh, yeah. they've got a few yeah, ex Bournemouth players in there as well. Matt Ritchie, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's Almiron. I still don't know if he's good. He. He looks good mm. sometimes, and he looks quick. It's so hot and cold, yeah, he looks isn't quick he? sometimes. But other times, he looks like he's running through custard, and he doesn't mm. know which way which way to kick the ball. It's, he's a bit of a strange player. Um, it's, yeah, it's it's really hard. It's really hard to tell. I mean, at the moment, if I'm my gut is telling me they're in trouble for the whole season, mm. unless he makes a big change somehow whatever that is completely changes how they're playing the players buy into it really quickly and they get a couple of quick results mm. I can't see anything changing between now and January not with the players I think they no. they definitely need some sort of personnel change there I don't think Eddie yeah. has the sort to somehow snap his fingers and they're keeping clean sheets and they're getting a couple of goals mm. I think they're going to try and stay as solid as possible between now and January and then see if they can bring in one or two players that can help secure the back and have a bit of extra flair, a few extra options. I mean, at the moment, they're going right through San Maximum almost every attack. That seems to be... Yeah. I, I can just imagine that's what they've been saying. Give the ball to him almost every mm. game. So they need other outlets on the other side of the pitch or behind the striker or something like that. So unless... If they can stay solid between now and January... Bring in a couple of players, a bit of flair and a bit of solidity at the back. They yeah. might be all right. If they don't do that, I think they're going to get relegated. But I think it's better for a manager coming in where you've got that solid base, you've got that solid foundation, especially if you are a bit more of a creative manager and you can allow your players to express yourself a little bit more. And I think that's the key is just finding that balance, not going too gung-ho with it and just making sure that you keep that, that solidness. Um, and I think that's a better situation and scenario to come into rather than if you sort of compare it to Norwich, where if you have it the other way around, you're expecting a, a, a more solid manager to come in where they've been playing with no solidity almost. They've been playing with a lot of freedom. Um, and then you're expected to just kind of tighten that all up. I think that's harder. Whereas I think it's easier coming in with that solid base and then just getting them to, to express themselves a little bit more. But then, yeah, we'll how do see. You, how do you, what do you think? What's your gut telling you? I I mean, I had to. I had a little look at Eddie Howe's um, career as, as Bournemouth manager and, and his record, um, because his first season in the Premier League, they finished 16th. Uh, so you can, I think there was what, three or three seasons where it was a bit of a relegation scrap and he got them out out of it. So I think he's got it in him to do that. Um, but he had a fantastic season where they finished ninth, which was the second Premier League season. So there's also that ability to for them to play really well. Um, I can see them being really in, in the, the, the heart of a relegation dogfight. And I think it's going to be a big scrap, but I think they'll just, just escape it. Um, but if they are to go down, I think this is the this is the thing, and I think they need to show just a lot more than what they did under Steve Bruce in terms of attacking intent and just a lot more fluidity and just play sexy attacking football, um, and that will really get the fans on board. And I think even if they get relegated, the fans will still be behind him, and I think the board will be behind him getting them back in and they will have the resources. But I think January is massive, massive for them as well. Because um, it looks like Michael Emanalo, who was the um, football technical director at Chelsea, is going to go in there as well. Mm -hmm. So if they get him on board, he, he, 
you know, recruit the likes of Eden Hazard, um, that will be quite a, a scary prospect. I saw that. I saw um, they're so doing, I, fishing around for some sort of director of football, a technical football director or something, because they allegedly went for Overmars at Ajax. Mm, yeah, he turned them down. So, yeah. But I think the thing with Newcastle as well, and this is something that I always scratch my head over, is it's been it's been a few opportunities for clubs to, to bring in who I think is an absolutely fantastic manager and I think he's gone under the radar so many times and I think he's massively underrated. Did you say and it's <laughs> Oh mate, you got me. Um no, it's the Ajax manager, Eric Ten Hart. I just think he's a fucking amazing manager and I think he's done really well at Ajax. Because he kind of turned things round for Ajax as well, because they weren't the the powerhouse that they are now, especially in the Champions League. Um, you can kind of argue in the Eredivisie, it's not much of a test for, for managers, especially if you're a manager of Ajax. But he completely cuts the mustard in, in the Champions League and he's got them playing some beautiful, beautiful football. So I'm really surprised a, a big team hasn't gone for him. And I think if Newcastle wanted to show real intent and they've you know they've got the absolute resources to do it and money talks that i think they could have got eric ten Hag if they really wanted to um but yeah it's it's one of those really what i, I just i just wanted a little moment to wax lyrical over eric well, ten Hag because i think there, was, there was a a few days in the summer where he was linked with spurs and yeah. they signed that new contract hmm Yes, yeah, so it's not going to be cheap. I understand that, but um, yeah, I, I still think Man United. If you know, I'd, I'd hate to see him in Man United. Are we, talk, are we talking Man about United. them now? Are we, are we going to switch over to Man United? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's go on to them. Um, I mean, have Man United more or less run out of options now? Because Conte surely was was a perfect fit. It was almost similar to what happened with Pochettino. They just left it too late. Um, and that that was a, a boat that they completely missed as well, I think. Um, but how the fuck is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer still manager well, think, of, th of Man United? I think you said it there without realising it. It's I think I think it's the same reason they wouldn't have gone for Conte. A lot of Man United fans have been really critical of them not having a plan on the pitch or off the pitch. And to get the plan on the pitch, they need a plan off the pitch because they need a manager who has a plan. Mm. If mm. they sack Ole without having a replacement, they do, if they if they sack him and they literally don't announce someone within a couple of days, there was no plan. Everyone's going to know it and they're going to get absolutely hammered. And we know that they bow to fan pressure. Mm. So that's it. They're, they're waiting until, or waiting or trying to find someone or they've got someone they they know is out there. And Ole is literally mm. just keeping the seat warm. That's, that, I'm, I am mm. absolutely convinced that's what was happening. I oh, see. So you think he's a goner? Yeah, oh, absolutely. As soon as as soon as they've sorted out that replacement, he's gone. I don't doubt it mm. at all. Who do you reckon they're going to replace? Him I have then? no like, idea. No clue. No idea. Zidane. I d Zidane. That's the only like feasible big name sort of. But they're. Marky signing that I can think of that would, would suit that job. Who's going to come in and will literally say, "I want to, I want to be here for ten years." Mm. They want someone to come in and be Ferguson, which yeah. I, you know that's a completely different conversation. But and we know mm. it's never going to happen. But it seems like that's what they want. They want some sort of continuity. They've tried Ole. They've like, okay, we've got this main eyed legend. <laughs> in to yeah. uh you know get things going oh maybe he'll push on and it'll be great and he hasn't quite done that well he hasn't done that at all has he and now they're i don't want to say they're not exactly sinking they're just on a bit of bad form i i, I i'm pretty sure I, I would say they are sinking like in terms of what is expected from them they finished I, second last I, season and it's not going to happen this i mean season. in terms of um, if you and yeah, not I'm not, not a lot of people like doing this, but if you take out the fact that they're Man United and they're a team that is on a bit of a bad run and you look at their players, you know that this bad run of form isn't going to carry on forever. They're not going to get relegated. No. Like, that's never going to happen. No. They're probably no. going to finish in the top six. 
still whatever happens. Mm-hmm. So they're going to turn the form around, even if Ole's still in charge. You know, I'm not mm-hmm. saying they're going to challenge for the title or win the league because it really, it's like that's never going to happen. Yeah, touch wood. Um, but I think that they're um, my brain went off a bit there. It's two different directions. They're look, they're they're not going to they're not going to sack until they have a plan until they have that mm-hmm. man that they can bring in within a day or so of getting rid of Ole. Yeah. And I think, as well, they would rather do it at the end of a season. Yeah. Because it's all about... Even if they don't have a plan, it's all about looking like they have a plan. They'll, yeah. He'll, he'll, end of the season, it'll be like, oh, OK, he's going, oh, look at this brand-new manager we've got, and it's great, we're giving him all this money, and he's got this pre-season, this is great, bish, bash, bosh, you know. I think... I yeah. think that's ideally that's what they'd do. They'd wait until the end of the season. And if he doesn't do, I think if if he doesn't do terribly, then they'll probably be absolutely fine with that. You know, if he if he mm. finishes in the top four again, and they progress to the next round of the Champions League, they don't seem too ambitious, do they? The owners really, if they no. if they really wanted the league, Champions League, and everything, they wouldn't have got Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in as manager. It never would have mm. happened. Yeah, I think the pressure to, to sack him and, and bring in a new manager is getting really, really heavy for them now. Especially because one of Ole's band of brothers that would always support him no matter what, um, Rio Ferdinand, has actually sort of turned around now and, and made a statement and said that maybe it's time for a change, which is hard to believe considering how Roy Keane and Gary Neville and Paul Scholes would always defend him to the hill. And um, now one of them is is well, they, changing the story. They tend to pick on the players uh, a bit more, don't they? Normally, because Roy mm. Keane's been laying into Fred. Well, <laughs> laying into Fred and subtly laying into Ole by saying, "Fred's mm. not a very good footballer. Why would you keep picking him?" Mm. Yeah. Well, exactly. That's that's down to Ole. But at the same time, like. W- 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 I think that the recruitment hasn't really helped him out a lot as well because, like, who do you play in central midfield? Uh, McTominay and Fred, are they the best options that they've got? I've asked that question a lot, and I think, yeah, I think it is. I think they, instead of paying absolute loads of money for, for Sancho, they should have should have looked to brought in somebody with a bit more um, a bit more quality in that defensive central midfield position. I mean, I think, I think Pogba's now injured, isn't he, for about two months or something. Mm. I mean, that he's definitely going on a free end of the season, isn't he? We all know this. Mm. There's no yeah. there's, there's no way they're getting any money for him in January. In yeah. And if Ole stays, then that means he's going to have to reluctantly play Donny van der Beek. Yeah, I know, which is <laughs> bizarre. What, I don't understand that. Yeah. What, it seems... He's such a good player, Donny, but I hate to see him rot in there. I'd love to see him at Arsenal, but... If you're interested in coming on the show for an Under the Floodlight special to talk about your favourite player or manager, please email the triple F2021 at gmail.com or DM the triple F84 on Twitter. All contact details will be in the episode description. Hope you're all keeping safe and thanks again for listening to the triple F. I mean, that's that's what I'm coming back to Eric Ten Hag. I think, you know, it would just be such a great fit. I mean, if Man United really had the ambition and they really had the desire to sort of cut their way back into into where they belong at the top, um, I think Ter- Eric Ten Hag would be would be a brilliant choice. I mean, you'd imagine that if anyone can uh, rebuild Van der Beek's confidence, he'd, he'd be the he'd yeah. be the perfect fit. I mean, I don't want to talk about Man United getting a good manager. Let's be honest here. Yeah, I know. I'm no, it doesn't buy with Ole. It's not easy there. for me. Give him a lifetime contract. <laughs> yeah. Yes, please. I think every opposition fan is is praying and hoping that Ole stays behind the wheel. But um, where did yeah. that even come from? I just. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> you I don't know. Argue? Yeah, wasn't it like Rio or somebody? It was. It, it was definitely like one of the. Oh, um, okay. That explains why. Or it, might, or it might have been like the MUTV or something where it came from. It's usually where these things happen. Okay. But then, um, just just quickly going on to Barca, maybe yeah. before we wrap things up. Um, yeah, Xavi, what's your thoughts? I mean, it's not a, it's not like a surprise appointment in a way, you know. No. Yeah, it was like one of those that you mentioned before. 
it was like every man and his dog knew that Javi was going to be the manager before he was appointed. Yeah, and it, and he's he's um, he's done quite well. Hang on, I've got my notes for this one on here. Uh, Al Saad, um, seven yeah, seven trophies in two and a half years, including the AFC wow. Champions League. No, that's incredible. You know, it's it's. Uh, Have you seen clips of like? their style of football and how they played it's because it was like prime pep sort of era Barca football it was, it was I lovely. Haven't. it's lovely to watch if I'm on it if I'm honest yeah, seen... I haven't I, I'm not I'm not really aware of how like the ticky tacker kind of triangles that sort of thing all, all I, the two things I know are allegedly his whole plan for going there was to practice for becoming Barcelona manager <laughs> and yeah he thinks that the standards have dropped massively since he left. Mm. I mean, they need a kick up the bum. They also need yeah. to stop spending ridiculous amounts of money. You know, if they, I don't, don't know if they can, can they do both those things? They've never, they've not been able to not spend loads of money ever before. So, mm. I, I, I mean, he seems pretty determined. Yeah. I, I was just so surprised by how defeatist Ronald Koeman was like towards the end of his tenure because I mean I'm not a massively um, knowledgeable when it comes to Koeman's career and if this is usually how he is or how he was before he got the sack at Southampton and Everton and so on and he didn't get the sack at Southampton sorry he just did he go from Southampton to Everton is that just like a natural transition I think? I don't, if I'm honest with you I can't remember I can't remember yeah I, I, but, <laughs> but if it I just don't remember Koeman being... Maybe it's just the whole Barcelona effect and them being absolutely in the mud. Any manager would go from a happy-go-lucky person to to Eeyore. Yeah. And Goodness me. <laughs> I, pulling out all the old references. Well, I don't ever remember him being that, that chipper, to be honest. Mm. Apart from... I don't, know if you, well, I don't know if you remember when England didn't qualify for... USA 94 and he should have been mm. sent off and, and then he scored after he sh after he should have been sent off and he wasn't yeah anyway, we're not supposed to like him I know that much Barcelona are absolutely in the mire at the moment it's going to be really hard for, for Xavi to to work miracles there really but you know if he he just gets them playing the, the football that's expected He'll Barcelona come. to play yeah, it will, it will eventually. I think it will be almost like a Guardiola effect. It will eventually take place. He's still uh, young. And they will, they will play. But, I mean, Luke de Jong and Martin Braithwaite in your, 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 your sort of front free attack. I mean, is you that... You never know. You never know. Maybe maybe <laughs> everyone else does the work and they're just there to tap it in. Mm, possibly, possibly. But Luke de Jong is absolutely... Trash. I mean, he's another one. I, I, you know, we stuck the boot in in Eric Dyer's time for Luke De Jong. Now. I don't know. I don't know how Luke De Jong has, has got himself Wait, a, an elite Newcastle football career. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was terrible. Probably worse than Joe Linton. He in was my opinion. worse than Joe Linton. My word. You really yeah. stick in the boot. Yeah, he, <laughs> he's bad, mate. He's really bad. At least, really at least bad. Newcastle That's played a... Joe Joe Linton on the wing. Like Luke De Jong would play up front. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening to the Triple F. If you could please drop a like on our Facebook page, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter, that would be massively appreciated. Hope you're all keeping safe, and thanks again for listening to the Triple F.